We are in like this asymmetric war with these billion dollar companies that have budgets that are, you know, through the roof. And basically their main goal is to attract your eyeballs in a particular direction, right? And to keep your eyeballs on their platform. And they are going to use all of the disposal, you know, resources at their disposal to allow for that, for that to happen. And then the question of course becomes, well, is that a healthy way to live? Is that the way that we want to live? Basically always being guided around by our impulses and by whatever is shiny right in front of us. Welcome to the Better Than Rich Show with your hosts, Andrew Biggs and Mike Abramowitz. The Better Than Rich Show helps ambitious leaders who are on a mission to leave the world better than they found it, change their perspective on what's important, increase their income and impact, and systemize their life and business. If you've ever struggled with finding your purpose, have felt disconnected or distracted, or found yourself going through the motions, this show will remind you that what you do matters and will re-inspire you to chase your highest dreams. It's time for you to become better than rich. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Better Than Rich Show. Uh, we are back for another exciting episode. I'm your host, Andrew Biggs, and I'm here with my co-host, Mike Abramowitz. Mike, how are you doing today? Feeling good, Andrew. It's good. always good. Good. <laughs> well, maybe not always, but hopefully, uh, <laughs> usually, if uh, we are the Better Than Rich brand, hopefully most of the time we're at least doing okay. Uh, you know, that's how I, how I like to look at it. And uh, today we have a really exciting topic for y'all. It's all about distraction, all the forms that it comes in, and how to overcome it. Uh, and we can't wait to, to dive in with you on that because it's such a pervasive problem, right, in our society in terms of uh, just something that we have to face and have to contend with on a regular basis. Uh, before we do that, we do have a little bit of housekeeping. You know, I know that, uh, Mike, you have a quick review that you want to share. Yeah, let me pull it up. I was just checking my email real quick. No, I'm just kidding. Just <laughs> yeah. Ah, see what I did there? Yeah. Very nice. All right. So we have a, a five-star review from Positively Elizabeth. And Positively Elizabeth says, innovative, smart, and savvy ideas about life and business. Highly recommend. Nice. Two exclamation points. So thank awesome. you, Positively Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. We will throw you into the contest to win the Better Than Rich Water Bottle. Uh, so one more week, uh, everybody. One more week uh, to get the Better Than Rich Water Bottle. Yeah, Mike is showing it on the screen uh, so you can see it in all its glory. Uh, it really is a high quality water bottle. Uh, it's, it's insulated and, and all of that good stuff. So uh, uh, my, this is my gym water it'll bottle. keep your, it'll keep your drinks cold or warm, depending on what you prefer. So, uh, <laughs> going on to our, our topic today about distraction, man, you know, I, I wrote down some notes that I'm excited to kind of break down, but just to lay out like the groundwork of the problem. Uh, I think it's so important in today's society because, you know, uh, in, in the, the thought leader, Daniel Schmachtenberger, if, if, if anyone, uh, not listening has not really listened to him and his interview on uh, Joe Rogan or some of his other work that he's done. You know, he just talks about how really we are in like this asymmetric war with these billion dollar companies that have budgets that are, you know, through the roof. And basically their main goal is to attract your eyeballs in a particular direction, right? And to keep your eyeballs on their platform. And they are going to use all of the disposal, you know, resources at their disposal to allow for that, for that to happen. And then the question of course becomes, well, is that a healthy way to live? Is that the way that we want to live? Basically always being guided around by our impulses and by whatever is shiny right in front of us. And so distraction is something that is a very common problem. And, you know, when you think about the starting point for breaking down some of the biggest pitfalls with distraction and obviously it's opposite focus, what comes up for you, Mike? The, the first immediate word is is presence. Uh, hmm. uh, and I know we've talked about that before, but it's like if I'm present, then it's hard hmm. for me to get distracted. So we have to think about what creates presence and how can we make being present a priority? Well, I think it's, we chase that down a little bit more. How does that get rooted? Well, we need to know what our priorities are that we want to be present in. So how do we figure out what our priorities are? We want to figure out what our goals are. We want to know what our purpose is. So if we could start anchoring down and asking the questions of why behind the why behind the why or the what behind the what behind the what, I think we can get a little bit more clear who who we are as, as a, who am I? Like, what is my identity? And what type of person do I want to be? What are the character traits that I want to have? What is the purpose? 
purpose that I'm here to, you know, to serve? What is the problem I'm here to solve? What message am I giving to the world? And if I know what my priorities are, and if that's rooted to that, then I'm going to be present within my priorities. And then I want to be reminded of those priorities as consistent as possible. And if I'm not being reminded of those priorities, then I'm going to enter that zone of distraction. Because ultimately, hmm. if you look at the, the metrics, there's the four quadrants of your of your zones and the top the top quadrant is where we want to be in our zone of genius. If you look at like urgent and important using a simple metrics like that from uh, Stephen Covey, seven habits of highly effective people, it's like what's important, but not urgent. That's like that zone of genius. But if you enter into what's urgent, but not important, then that's like that zone of distraction where it's like constantly being in that or or constantly being in the reaction that's reaction. Mm. But if it's not urgent and not important, then it's distraction. So that's, Mm. that's kind of what immediately shows up for me. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And I think, you know, we are constantly being interrupted, right? There's kind of like interruptions. And then there's also this like fourth quadrant of not urgent and not important. And I think it's, you know, it's so important if you haven't read Seven Habits to go back and, and make sure you read that. It's kind of like foundational, you know, reading. It's like just reading your your classics of personal growth, you know, how to win friends, influence people, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Think and Grow Rich. Like you got to make sure you've read those before you jump onto really anything else in the personal growth space. But I, I mean, basically what I'm hearing you say is people who are clear on their goals and clear on their priorities don't get distracted, right? Or at the very least, they get distracted a hell of a lot less. A little Um, bit less, I would say. I would say it's a little bit less. Yeah. Especially if they have a systematic way that they're reminded of why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, and I have, I have my own points, but I feel like this is really a strength of yours is reconnecting to that vision every single day. And what are some of the things that you do on a daily basis to help you reconnect to the vision once you've created it? Uh, because I see people all the time create a vision for themselves, create goals, and then it's in a notebook somewhere. And then it just like, it sits in a shelf or it's in a notebook and it's, you know, pa- packed away in the closet or something. And they never even look at it again. And if you go back six months later and ask them what they wrote, they don't even remember, even though what they re- what they wrote was really meaningful at the time. So what would you what would you say to that? Well, I've been guilty of that so many times. And, yeah. and that's why one of my daily disciplines is to write out those goals every single day. So if, if you look, you know, for those of you that are on uh, Zoom or, or on uh, the YouTube, you could see this is today and yesterday. I hmm. write down my goals, uh, my annual goals. I write down my 60 to 90 day goals. This is uh, the day before. I write down my win the week, win the day. This is, you know, May 1st, May 2nd. So I just, I am the daily discipline. It takes me four minutes. It's not an enjoyable four minutes, but it is four Hmm. minutes of my day to write down my goals. So just the physical act of writing them down keeps it top of mind because I have been there in the past where I would know what I want or I would be really inspired doing a journal entry and then, you know, put it, tuck it away and not look at it for six months and forget what was I really focused on or what was really exciting for me. So the four minute daily discipline Hmm. has kept my goals and my priorities top of mind for a since October 12th. I started this practice October 12th, 2021. And I've done it nearly every single day uh, since October 12th, 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I love that you say it's not your favorite four minutes, right? Because I think, you know, sometimes we are comfortable with that at the gym, right? We're like, oh, I know this workout's going to suck, but I need to do it. Or in other ways, right? I'm willing to discipline in this area. But like even these simple tasks just Practicing discipline, even when you don't feel like it, uh, is so important so that you do keep those those goals that you have and that vision that you have top of mind. Uh, so again, it's are you clear on your goals and then how committed to them are you, right? And if you can be clear on those two things, you should be getting less distraction uh, in general because you're now oriented to uh, to want to pursue those goals more uh, more effic- effectively and more efficiently. You know, another, another thing that I wanted to share, uh, was just like, sometimes our brains are really just overloaded with just too much, right? There's too much going on. It's, I, I kind of equate our brains to like, you know, your web browser. And if you're listening, you've probably had this experience where you just had too many tabs open. Uh, and you, you were like, Oh my gosh, like my brain is just simply not functioning at the normal rate at the normal speed. Like I forgot where I put my keys and then I, you know, I was leaving the, you know, the house and I was like, where's my phone? It was literally in my hand or whatever. Like our brains just aren't functioning the way we want them to. 
And a lot of times what's happening there is we just have too many tabs open in our brains. Uh, and so what we want to do, uh, which, which leads to distraction, right? It leads to us being less focused and all over the place and scattered. Uh, and so what we want to do is what I call a brain dump. And, you know, you can do this on a sheet of paper in a journal, or you can do this on a Google spreadsheet or whatever is, is kind of your primary method that you think this would work for you. Uh, but doing a brain dump is just like, what are all the things on your mind, right? You know, what are all the things that you're thinking about right now? Or what are all the things that you know you need to do? Because sometimes we don't even write down our to-dos. And so it's like, what are all the things that are on your mind? What are all the things that you know you need to get done, your action items? And what that does is it's basically the equivalent of you going through and Xing out a bunch of tabs and only leaving a few open, and then you're going to run a lot smoother, right? Um so I, I would highly encourage that, uh, again, for, for two reasons. One is it actually helps you free up your mind. The other is now you have a, a full list of the things you need to do, and then you can kind of systemize it and organize it a, a heck of a lot better because you actually have it in a, in a one place that you can, you can look at. Uh, so it also has that practical element to it. So just doing a brain dump and getting things off of your off of the, you know, using the, the bandwidth of your brain, using the router, you know, bandwidth that is, that is available uh, is so important. So, you know, try that out. I'm, I'm curious what you think of that, Mike. Yeah, one of the journal practices that I put in Grab Your Thoughts, uh, the guided journal I put together is mm -hmm. one of my favorite journal entries is feel, what, how do I feel? Mm -hmm. Why do I feel this way? How do I want to feel? And what are the steps I can get there? And that's my version of a brain mm -hmm. dump that I learned, you know, probably a decade ago. And it's helped serve me tremendously because it's just answering those questions. And sometimes it's just words. It's not even sentences. It's just like, you mm -hmm. know, just randomly writing words down. And anytime I feel the need to kind of just dump the mind, those mm -hmm. are four really great phrases or questions. So how do I feel right now? Why do I feel this way? How do I want to feel? And what are actions I can take to get there? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting on how how easy it is for me to use that. And then boom, you, some of my journal entries, when I do that, it, it's, it, it runs for like four pages of like just awesome content mm -hmm. that comes from it, just allowing the free flow to write uh, that gets triggered from those questions. So it's a great right. reminder. Yeah, and, and ultimately what you're pointing to is there's a lot of like things on our mind that we don't know are on our minds, right? And it's like, how do we, again, this is a big part, a theme at Better Than Rich. That's probably why you've heard it on multiple podcasts, but it's like making the unconscious conscious. And so what we're doing is we're pulling all those like unconscious, like anxieties or fears or whatever, we're bringing them to the surface so that now we can act more clearly and more cleanly. Speaking of like cleanliness, uh, I know this may sound silly to some of you because maybe you don't value it as much, but I do believe that a physical environment that's clean, that looks good, that is organized matters to helping you avoid distraction, right? Like nobody wants to go and sit down at, and work at a messy desk. You know, there's the old saying of like cluttered desk is a reflection of a cluttered mind, right? Like a cluttered desktop with all these like images and photos and screenshots, you know, and documents scattered across your desktop is the sign of a cluttered mind. And so if you have this environmental aspect of it not working out for you, you need to make sure that you're taking responsibility for that too. Uh, this is honestly something I, I learned from my wife more than myself because I wasn't always the, the cleanest guy, but she's like always has, wants to have a pristine, you know, environment for us to live in. And I've gotten so used to it. Now I see the value where it's like, wow, when the house is a mess, I do worse work. I do do better work when things are buttoned up and clean and organized. Uh, and so there's multiple ways to organize. Of course, there is the, the physical space, but I would also recommend, you know, what does it look like for you to organize your digital space? You know, is your Google Drive in order? Can you easily find documents? Can you easily find photos that you need? Can you, you know, are your internal desktop clean? And then thinking about your environment in the physical sense, in the digital space, you know, even like looking at your car, like, is it clean? Uh, all those different things, making sure that you're clear on what your environment needs to look like in order to do good work and not get distracted easily. And then, you know, even stuff like, you know, not having some boundaries, right? Like, is your workspace designed for work or do you mix it? Uh, and I think that can get a little uh, hairy too when people are wanting to do work, they sit down at their desk, but it's also where they play video games, you know? And so it's like, pretty hard to focus sometimes when you you don't really know why you're in that room but anyways what what comes up for you mike no that's a great reminder I, mm -hmm. and sp environment is big and i know you you do this quite often where it's like uh i'm gonna uh, i'll zoom with you and you're at a coffee shop or you're, yeah. you're at a park or <laughs> sure. you're, you're a different different Correct. environment 
for me, this is like, this is my man cave. You know, this is my yeah. space. I, I come in here and I know I'm getting work done. If I'm in mm -hmm. this space, uh, this is where I do work. This is my masculine energy. This is my, where, where this is, mm -hmm. this is the spot. But if I need to tap into a little bit more of that feminine, if I got to tap into a little bit more free flow, maybe some creative or, you know, just like not be so rigid, then I'm going to go in a different room and mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna, maybe we'll go for a walk, go outside or something like that. So, so it's, the environment is a great reminder there. Well, one thing I, I wanted to uh, bring back is you said, Andrew, you said the, if the desktop is uh, like real messy or if the desk is real messy or, you know, sometimes we don't want to clean it. Sometimes instead mm -hmm. we just want to avoid it. And, you know, another word for avoidance could be escape. So mm -hmm. I'd love to jam with you for a little bit of like, well, why would somebody want to escape cleaning or why would somebody want to, uh, you know, avoid this or escape it? Mm -hmm. You know, what is the cause for that? And then what is maybe, maybe some solutions or cause and mm -hmm. effects or consequences that, you know, maybe show up. And I'd like to hear from you on this. And I have a couple of thoughts on it too. But. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's a great question. And in some ways it's a primary question. It's a foundational question. It might even be uh, some psychologists put this almost at the, at the root of all of our behaviors, right? We're either kind of taking on responsibility or we're avoiding it. We could almost look at all of our actions going in one of those two directions, right? Are we moving towards something like towards our destiny or are we avoiding it? Are we taking on more responsibility and growing and making the world better or are we avoiding it and, and maybe not make, actively making it worse, but making it worse because entropy is the enemy. Things fall apart. Things decay. Entropy is going to happen in your business. Entropy is going to happen in your marriage. Entropy is going to happen in other relationships. Entropy is going to happen with your health. Entropy is going to happen with your car, with your house, whatever. Like entropy is a, a, a universal uh, in the, you know, in our universe. And so if we are not moving actively in the direction of making things better, then naturally things get worse. And so that is the foundational kind of like human problem that we're trying to solve here. So then it's like, well, why would we, why would we choose escape? Well, I think it really mostly, if we go to a psychological perspective, it mostly has to do with instant gratification versus delayed gratification. What, you know, when we choose instant gratification, there's a trade-off, right? Obviously we, we kind of avoid the short-term pain. We're kind of like numbing the pain. We're ignoring the pain. Maybe we're justifying, you know, why the pain is okay, or we're kind of blaming others. But no matter what, what we're doing is we're kind of taking this short-term band-aid or this pill or whatever uh, to kind of like numb the pain and get it away. And therefore, and that could be distraction, right? It could be other forms, but to, for our purposes today, let's say someone's using distraction to avoid that, uh, the things they need to do, then, you know, essentially what you've done is you've chosen instant gratification, but what that shows is, you know, higher levels of anxiety and stress, higher levels of depression, and ultimately this lack of meaning in your life, because I believe that in taking responsibility, that's where meaning is to be found. Meaning is to be found in the taking of responsibility in our lives. And when we avoid it, we live this meaningless sort of uh, insignificant life. And when we embrace it, we experience way more of that meaning and that connection and that deep sense of fulfillment that ultimately you came to the Better Than Rich show to try to get. So Mike, what, what comes up for you on that? Well, the first thing that came up is I, I've heard the word entropy and I was uh, immediately like, I know this word, but I, I don't know if I use this all the time and do yeah. I know it? So I Googled entropy yep. and uh, it says lack of order or predictability, a gradual a gradual decline in disorder, hmm. origin, meaning inside transformation. So if any of Yeah. Them, and just to give you like a philosophical people that are out there uh, that are <laughs> word, word gurus like my friend yeah. Andrew over here. No yeah. worries. And entropy, you know, it's not a word that you hear very often. Right. But it's it's technically it's a scientific term where, you know, it's just this meaning that things it's a lot more likely for things to become disordered than ordered. Right. There's a lot more ways for things to fall apart than they are to come together, right? Like you're not going to accidentally make a pizza, right? You're not going to accidentally build a house, right? What naturally is going to happen is it's going to, you know, the house is going to fall apart and decay and turn to rubble. So that is, you know, and of course, if we look at this in terms of, you know, science, it's just like our cells are, are meant to fall apart are, and die and are, you know, even from like a physics perspective, right? Like there's chaos, uh, way more chaos than there is order. So look it up, you know, enjoy, enjoy the little uh, science lesson.
wasn't there with entropy but yeah what what's uh what else came up for you on this that was no that was perfect mm -hmm. and, and it's true is because we we understand that no matter no matter what our circumstances are we know that react like react we're gonna have to react to some things you know it's not gonna always be this order it's not gonna you know there's there's gonna be rain when you expect sunshine you know there's gonna mm -hmm. be snow when you don't expect things are always gonna happen when we don't expect them and we got to be able to be nimble and respond to them the thing that came up for me is that when you're not reacting to the things that are unexpected is how can you still show up in a responsible way for when circumstances aren't happening happening. And the hmm. challenge that I see coming back to the root of the question, which is why do people want to escape? Why do people want to, you know, avoid instead of embracing it or just checking the box or handling the responsibility? And sometimes I think that we get to this point of like overload or like overwhelm. It's almost like you you, you hear the computer start running like it's like, like a plane airplane is about hmm. to take off, right? And it's like the computer's getting overloaded. So it's got to kind of like reset a little bit and recalibrate uh, itself. And I don't know if many people know how to do that for themselves. So instead of recalibrating and, and figuring out how to do this process of, you know, they're, they're processing their thoughts and behaviors, they just avoid it and they'll just go settle into a distraction or addiction and, and settle into what's comfort because that's what our amygdala is wired for us to do is to, mm. you know, fight or flight. So, and we'll just go flight. So that's, that's what shows up for me. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, as far as what we could do for this overload or this mm -hmm. overwhelm, or how to kind of offset that so that way we don't go into this flight you know mm -hmm. uh place that's that you know i don't know if you, you have a thought on that but yeah yeah and this is where like the energetic you know practices if you go back and listen to you know episode three of ours or or some of the things around morning and ri evening rituals uh there's some really good episodes that you can go back and learn some of these things on but i think back to just your physiology right there's some really cool, like just basic techniques, right? We could try right now, right? Uh, no matter where you are. Uh, I got this from the Huberman Lab podcast. I, I really like Andrew Huberman. Uh, I may have mentioned him in the past as well, but the fastest way to kind of get yourself out of your mind and into your body, into your, your limbic system and, and activate the sympathetic nervous system is to do two quick uh, breaths into the nose, like rapid fire, like, and then uh, to breathe out through the mouth slowly. So... And if you do that a few times, all of a sudden what starts to happen is you start to re actually relax, right? So if you notice that you're kind of like overheating, you know, uh, try that out, right? Uh, and what you're doing is, you know, you're, you're kind of, it, it's like a hack, right? To, to uh, hack the nervous system and make that to work. Uh, here's, here's another one to, to help you feel, you know, uh, bring, back, bring you back in your body. Like go ahead and just relax your shoulders, unclench your jaw, Unfurl your head, uh, forehead, uh, lower the roof of your, you know, the tongue from the roof of your mouth. Breathe in, breathe out. All right. Like all of a sudden, you know, things have shifted for you, even if it's ever so subtly. I don't know if Mike, you want to report back what you feel in this moment, but like we don't even know we're ten, you know, have tense shoulders and that we are, our foreheads are, are furled and our jaw is clenched and the root of the tongue is attached to the roof of our mouth. We're not even aware of this because we're just like, this is normal, but that's not really the primary way. That's like an aggressive way of, of operating. And if we want to get into a more relaxed way where we actually can have agency to choose what we want to do instead of just be in reaction mode all the time. We need to practice some of these things. Like what comes up for you? I remember 2016 when you started coaching me, uh, you said, I want you to take 10 minutes every day and lay mm. down on your office floor. Mm. And it's like, you know, it's the middle of summer, right? Like it's the summer season. You're like, yes. Mm. And that's why I want you to lay on your office floor for 10 mm. minutes. So I would go to my staff and I'd say, all right, guys, I'm going in here. Don't come in the door. Don't come in. I got to do what my coaches tell me to do. I got to do a practice. I wouldn't hmm. even tell them because I was embarrassed. It was like, right. <laughs> the case they came in and was like, Mike, what the? Mike is napping in the middle of the day. Like what the yeah. hell is going on here? Hmm. But it was, it was a really important practice. It was, hmm. it was exactly that. It's just 10 minutes. I would set alarm on my phone, just uh, cut the phone off, uh, put it on airplane mode, put it aside hmm. and just lay there for 10 minutes until the alarm went off. And hmm just this opportunity to rejuvenate, recharge, you know, just like unplug for just a moment. So yeah, uh, 
that that overload the, the overload that comes in oftentimes it's because we are not taking the time to do these things it's it's just especially because we believe that when we watch tv we are we're just uh, relaxing or when we go on social media we scroll scroll aimlessly uh that's relaxing for us but it's not to, to what andrew said in the beginning these experts in the industry have created those movies and created those uh those algorithms to market to you certain and things. So it's actually not relaxing. It's stimulating more than relaxing. In fact, it's stimulating so much that it's going to create unconscious or conscious, unconscious decisions and unconscious patterns more than likely. In fact, science shows and studies show that whatever you listen to and watch before you go to bed is going to replay six times over in your unconscious mind. So it's like, you know, these algorithms are there. These are businesses, hmm. you know, Hollywood is a business. These movies, they have agendas. The, the news has an agenda. Social media hmm. has agendas i mean like it's sometimes they're not bad it's not like malicious intent agendas but they have one hmm. and if you are thinking that by you watching movies and tvs and relaxing that that is a form of relaxation it's not because you're still stimulated so i would highly recommend if you ever feel that feeling of i don't I don't want to clean that desk or I'm just going to escape. Mm. Let me escape into alcohol. Let me escape into pornography. Let me escape into video games. Let me escape into binge, binge scrolling. Let me escape into binge watching Netflix. I would highly recommend before you go into whatever that is, whatever that overload tactic that you've always done mm. is to do what Andrew's advice to me was back in 2016 and just put all the devices and screens away and lay on the floor for 10 minutes and and see if you still want to then go to the Netflix, to the porn, to the video games, to the mm. bowl or the, you know, the blonde <laughs> or whatever it is that you're going to go hit. 10 mm. minutes, no devices and see what happens. Yeah. In the yeah. nose, twice and mm. then out the mouth, maybe through like a coffee straw. So it's a, even a slower out exhale. Mm. Nice. In the I like it. Nice. So that's, that's, those are, that's my thoughts. I like it. I like it. Uh, and it's again, you know, if you, and this is really a useful thing, like if you can't be without your phone, like you need to be able to go on a walk without your phone. You need to be able to like spend some time away from technology. I was actually really proud. I was on the way to, uh, we were dropping my son off to school last week. I think it was on Thursday and we were driving and he, he goes, daddy, I think I've just had too much screen time lately. <laughs> and like, I'm like, wow. Like the fact that he's bringing that to me, was really cool. And, uh, you know, I was like a proud papa moment. I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. Like, you know, what, what do you think you should do? He's like, I think I want to take a week off of screen time. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm like, okay, he, great. Has he heard you say this somewhere? Or do you think, I mean, you know, probably, you know, probably he's picked it up from us being like, well, we've definitely said, hey, you have too much screen time or, oh man, I've been on my phone all day. I need a break or whatever. Like he's probably picked up on stuff like that. But for him to initiate it, <laughs> I was, I was a little shocked because he normally would, you know, kind of retaliate against that. And, uh, you know, so I, I mean, I probably offered him too much, but I was like, Hey, if you do that for a full week, I'll give you a hundred bucks, you know? Cause I was just like, man, I got to take this opportunity to make sure he gives this and it's an opportunity for him to build his confidence. I know this is off, off tra topic a little bit, but it's an opportunity for him to build his confidence in terms of his own self-control, because that's something that he kind of struggles with. It's just like, you know, if the marshmallow's there, he wants to grab it sort of thing. And if I, you know, versus Hey, if you wait an hour, I'll give you two marshmallows. He's just like, no, I'll, I'll eat the marshmallow. So I, I wanted to, I wanted to build that, you know, that confidence of self control. So I said, I'll give you a hundred bucks, and like he really did it. Like he spent the entire week with no screen time, and he just seems calmer, seems happier, right? Seems like he he's a little bit of a you know chubby right now. Eli, if you're listening to this and you're older, who know maybe you've, maybe you've thinned out. Right now he's a little chubbier than he needs to be. He's like lost like three pounds. Uh, like it's just like super cool to watch how the health can be restored when you take some time away. So if you can't do that, and my seven-year-old can, you know, you really need to question. Uh, I know a lot of you use your screens for work, but you, can you at least go an hour or two every single day or whatever without it? Um, it's it's cool. I mean, he even came to me. He's like, I think I want to do another week, and I'm like, I'm not giving you another hundred dollars, but uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> so we'll we'll see how this week goes and but see it, if the incentive a, it's a great, was. It is yeah. a great reminder, and it's 100 percent off to, on topic because mm -hmm. a lot of distractions come on the opposite end of not having self-control. That's where a lot mm -hmm. of distraction settles in. So 
it, it is a hundred percent relevant. And uh, you know, the, the reason why, again, coming back, why do we lack the self-control? Where is mm. that coming from? And mm. if we just get curious versus just like, oh, I am tired. Mm. Oh, I am drained. Oh, I am like, well, you're reinforcing the pattern of behavior that you really don't want to continue. So it's like, we just got to be aware. So be curious. So it's more of like, why am I tired? Why am I drained? What's the cause of this? And and being a little bit more curious and gentle with yourself, uh, it's it's hard. I'm not saying that's easy. And I'm not saying I'm an expert at it because I, I, I'm i still on the journey with all of you, maybe a couple of steps ahead, just because I've invested probably, you know, multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars into personal hmm. growth and development over the last 20 years. But, you know, you have the opportunity in front of you right now to just question everything, question everything that's happening. Why do I want to play video games for 25 minutes before bed? You know, why do I want to aimlessly scroll? Like, what is what it what need is this satisfying? That's a really good question to, to mm. ask as well. What, what need am I trying to satisfy with this distraction right now? Mm. Is, it, is it a need for variety? Is it a need for un, you know some sort of adventure? Is it a need for significance? Uh, you know what is mm. it? You know what because distraction is ultimately we're trying to satisfy something. We just got to question what is that? What is it that we're trying to satisfy? And right. then if we could get to the root of it, what need? What, how are we trying to satisfy it? Or why? why we try to satisfy then we could ask what is a healthier way for me mm. to satisfy the need what is a more productive way that maybe i can satisfy this need that what is the least amount of consequences uh, you know how is what's a what's another way i could satisfy this need with the least amount of consequence because ultimately this is potentially before we head for the exits there are consequences on the other mm. end of distraction yeah you know you know if Fair you're if you're in a conversation with someone and you're looking at your email and you're like, no, I'm listening to you. And oh, guilty of that one, you know, checking the phone while my wife is talking to me, she, she'll tell you, she absolutely hates that. And I hate that I do that too. <laughs> like it's not, I'm not perfect at this by any means. I don't have a perfect score, but I, I'm a, I try to do, give myself the best credit as possible when I'm aware. It's like, shit, I'm, I'm distracted right now. Let me put this away. Uh, or she'll just stop talking. That's the worst where, where she catches me and she just stops talking. And I, and I look up and she's like, I'll just wait for when you're done. And when you're paying attention I'm like oh shit that's the worst right but you know <laughs> but you know we, we just want to keep keep score like if we are distracted what are the consequences because what message am i sending to my wife when mm -hmm. i look at my phone the message i'm sending is whatever's up in my phone is more important than you right now that's there's a consequence to that and if that mm -hmm. keeps that's a that's a x mark next to my name and too many of those x marks next to my main name is going to create pain in the relationship and, mm -hmm. and that's just a, a personal example but what is your version of that example too much time I'm doing blank creates an X mark. Okay. What if we compound that over the course of you fill in blank period of time, what are the potential consequences that could arise compounded over time? And then we ask a question, what is a healthier way to replace that? Cool. What is the compound effect of that over the course of time? And that's what I love about James Clear Atomic Habits is he says 1% better every day. And he said 1% better every day for a year, if you compound it, ends up bringing something like 37% uh, the way he did the math on it. And that's, that's a whole new trajectory of life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty remarkable. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the the studies show like people will self-report, which again, this pretty surprising that people are this aware, but they'll self-report that they waste like five hours a day, pretty much, right? <laughs> and it's like, what if you just wasted what? <laughs> Not even saying don't waste any time. But like, what if you, you know, uh, just, you know, reduced it by 80%. I mean, uh, you listening, if you, you know, want to do this exercise, ask yourself, how much time do I waste on a daily basis? And then, yeah, why? What, I, I, what are the consequences? Like of that? Calculator just to calculate, just, yeah. just, just you can see. So if it's one hour a day, mm -hmm. that's 365 hours divided by 24 hours. That's 15 days. Yeah. So one hour of distraction a day is 15 days. So using your example of five hours a day, yeah, that's 15 times five. That's 75 days. Yeah. That's two months. Mm -hmm. That's more yeah, than two, two and half, months. Two and a half months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's remarkable, yeah. right? Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, it's just that. a great point. I mean, people are, you know, like, and that's probably accurate. And you listening right now, you're like, yeah, you know, I hate to admit it, but yeah, he's probably right. Uh, I probably do waste, you know, five hours a day. Or maybe if you're listening to the show, you're like, well, I only waste three. Okay. Well, hey, fair enough. Good for you. But like, what does it look like for you to reduce it uh, even more so? You know, and ultimately, you know, this comes back to uh, 
you know, something that maybe we could touch on another time. I looked up the quote here. I'll throw it on the screen. We can kind of like leave with this. But Carl Jung said, people will do anything, no matter how absurd, to avoid facing their own souls. Pretty, pretty deep quote, as Jung is known to uh, be a pretty deep thinker. Uh, but we need to ask ourselves, what are we really trying to escape from? What are we really trying to run from? And so often it's the pain that we've experienced. Maybe it's past traumas or maybe it's regrets or maybe it's fears or insecurities. Maybe it's, uh, you know, your shadow, right? As, as Jung would put it, like the, the monster inside you, some of the, the darker forces that, that all of us, I personally believe, kind of have within us and are capable of. But if they aren't looked at and checked, then they're going to be subconsciously, you know, doing way more than than you even, you know, really know they're doing for you right now. And then you wake up one day and wonder where, why, why you aren't where you thought you wanted, you would be by such and such age or whatever. And the answer probably lies uh, in this question. So something to leave you with here as we're, as we're departing, Mike, any thoughts before we let everybody go for the week? What a great quote. People will do anything, no matter how absurd, to avoid facing their own souls. Hmm. And uh, it's like that uh, that battle of the mind. Think about think about the next time you go into the shower because you can't have too many distractions in the shower. So hmm. that's, a, that's a good uh, telltale sign of what's going on in your thoughts and in your mind uh, when you're taking a nice, warm, hot shower and you're just kind of relaxing. Take a you know, just an audit, see what's going through the mind there. Cause that, that, that will give you a good telltelling sign. And then here's my challenge to you is turn that sucker to cold for 60 seconds and see what happens to the mind 60 hmm. seconds and see how crazy the inner voices go for 60 seconds. Cause you're not going to die. You know, like you're, you're not going to die if you go in cold water for 60 seconds, but your mind's voice, do yourself a favor and just see what the conversation sounds like and report back to us. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to hear what takes what happens. Hit us up in the Facebook uh, group or, uh, you know, in the show notes or whatnot, uh, send us an email, send me a text, send me a voice note, whatever. I, I, I'd be curious. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you, Mike. Appreciate your time. Thank you, listeners. We appreciate you. Uh, and we just appreciate each and every one of you. Honestly, I want to speak to you individually listening to this. We are a small but fa- fastly growing company and a fastly growing, uh, quickly growing uh, community. So uh, if you listening want to share this with somebody, uh, please do. Uh, because this has really been life-changing for for many folks. And also, we will continue to be putting out content, so we hope you enjoy it. Uh, We'll leave you until next week. Have a great week ahead. Remember to leave today better than you found it. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the show, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from us, you can follow us on Instagram at better than underscore rich and join our Facebook group at the better than rich show. Thanks again for listening. We look forward to seeing you next time. And remember, leave today better than you found it.